Kushbu Mehta is a curious, value-driven individual, passionate about creativity and human connection. Her calling lies in building a thriving community that inspires and empowers women to break free from their limiting beliefs and embrace their true selves. With a love for journaling, exploring diverse cultures, and continuous learning, currently, she is working with an international NGO focusing primarily on conserving the environment. On a lighter note, she is a certified German language trainer. The topic that I'm going to talk about is, is imposter syndrome, which we might have heard, experienced, or seen you know, in some way or another. And uh, why I have chosen this is it is very close to my heart in that sense, because there were a lot of times when I started my career and uh, during my also personal journey as well, I felt the sense of that uh, not being enough, like or having that sense of inadequacy, or there are certain kind of doubts that are in my mind that I need to constantly prove myself. But over the period of time, I realized that, you know, it's not just lying within you know individual uh, potential uh, within individual minds so to say but it's something that you know we need to also see the environment that we are living in so currently like since this uh, presentation is all about like you know imposter syndrome especially in the realm of workplace in the work environment how like you know we can challenge that because so far like you know our focus is more into the individual space that and especially when we talk about imposter syndrome it is targeting women itself i would like to highlight that uh, i'm also the founder of upper ladder with one of my friend also who has been very dear a uh, friend of mine uh, and we're trying to also challenge the limiting beliefs because at the end of the day when we talk about also the self awareness and the change that we want to see out in the world as pointer mahatma gandhi itself uh, it is very important that you know we go to the root cause itself and that's why i started with this community of upper ladder which focuses on that you know how we can tap into the real potential of the woman itself without having a sense of any sort of self doubt and uh, also um, yeah so this is something that uh, a brief about me and i'll directly go into the topic itself which is imposter syndrome so as i briefly mentioned that so imposter when we talk about imposter syndrome it has a self doubt component but more than that uh, it is go it goes beyond self doubt and it is more about the matter of uh, self you know or the fear of belief that i don't deserve the success achievements or accolades or achievements whatsoever and even if you earn it uh, or you succeed in getting that you feel that we, i don't deserve it and there could be many reasons for example like you see oh i just you know maybe i got just lucky i was at the right place at the right time or i just you know somebody just helped me out and perfectionism overworking you know took those places when we talk about the imposter syndrome uh, in those instances in fact we started working for long hours we we don't want to learn new skills because we want to be so perfect in doing one thing so that you know we get into the uh, ex- we go uh, get into the expert level but um, as you could see that the good news is here the imposter syndrome is so to say uh, it's lie in our minds which means we can manage it by managing our minds and like we say that that you know a belief is something that we think and not everything we think needs to be believed upon and what i mean by the fact is that we are not mercy of our thoughts we can change what we think and how we think and that's where like you know uh, this this power lies in all of us and some but we never like you know maybe sometimes we just underestimate that or we never question that so that's why like you know it's high time that you know we start questioning like you know what are those beliefs that you know that exist at the individual level but apart from that why like i think this is much more important because of the fact that recent studies have also showcased since past few years as well that uh the feeling of self doubt the feeling of inadequacy has been more rampant among women than men i i'm not denying that of course men don't feel that that you know like i maybe i don't uh, deserve the success or achievements but especially the social conditioning the social culture norms which has been highlighted also by radhik and leah in the uh, in, her, in their presentation as well it's something that you know uh, is more rampant because we have always been constantly told that you know we need to prove ourselves to get that so i think it's uh, and especially when we come into the male dominant industry like we have seen the figures again like you know it's forced to one like you know yeah. i mean 50 years back like we have uh, 
one of the inspiring role model in india like you know sudha murthy she's an engineer now like and she's also like has been running a lot of uh, foundation which is focusing on the uh, women causes related causes so when she started engineering like 50 years back she was only one in that uh, 100 students that, that are all engineers so you could imagine that i mean i mean we have come a long way but there is still a long way to go but today of course like you know i'm sure that everybody has talked about like you know the imposter syndrome like you know how it affects especially among women and on top of that we also resonate uh, we go into these uh, traditional or conventional self help strategy which focusing uh, focuses on some uh, kind of affirmations and mentoring like for example i deserve this success i'm worthy enough like you know my value is not defined by imperfection which is all great and i have also personally used that in a way um and has proven to you know to be helpful and especially from drawing from my own experience listening to my friends as well and the mentors that i have both male and also female have actually really deeply impacted my career as well but somehow uh if you go into that like if you see that like if you're telling yourself in front of the mirror like i'm worthy enough it's great like you know but do you actually believe in that i mean so this is something that you know we need to see that like it's great that you know maybe you can get a short term result when you practicing those affirmations or having those resources for mentoring but again i think it boils down to the fact that you know how for example it actually addresses the root causes of those techniques that we have been using it to because maybe like you know we are able to focus uh, here on the sim- symptoms here like you know address the situation at the surface level but it goes back to or you know asking i think the critical question that is it something really about me or is it something about the environment that we are in and since of course we are focusing in the re- in the realm of work environment how actually it is deeply rooted in the in the workplace culture and the policies and the reform itself are we actually actually addressing those feelings because at the end of the day we as human beings wants to be feel heard valued respected um and also have a sense of belonging so are we able to create those th- that culture of you know the the trust and the belongingness so i think this is where that you know we need to address that and and secondly also of course uh, because we got all these wonderful resources let's say like you know you have you're doing mentor uh, having great mentor you're doing maybe uh, positive affirmation to address this and to overcome this but what if like you know you're working in a toxic environment you know maybe your manager doesn't understand you your colleagues are always like you know playing some different games around you they always judge you from where you come from so even those you know doesn't turn out to be. and that's why like you know we're ignoring the systemic issues where you have been again like because we always have usually some preconceived notions or stereotypical thinking which i primarily have seen as negative as well and especially like uh, from my experience like learning dif- learning a language for a language here working across different cultures well i understood that you know there's always a biasness that we always carry subconsciously so are we actually like aware of that and how do we like you know uh, take that into consideration but i'll not <laughs> focus much into this because of course we have spoken about okay we got the feeling of inadequacy we got the feeling of self doubt but how for example like actually like you know we can bring that change that we you know we want to uh, bring uh, bring in the space of uh, how we can reduce this feeling of you know self doubt here so i think it's high time firstly that we need to go away from or make a paradigm shift from systemic issues that we have to systemic change and fostering the inclusive culture and what I, what do i mean by the fact is rather than focusing on individual resilience because let's say you have 10000 employees you cannot have sometimes a lot of resources or you may be struggling with the budget constraint which is always you know being the case as well because sometime when the companies don't understand the investment that you know they will be getting it or the roi from that in terms of the employee engagement and retention and everything but what do you know we can do for example in you know on in order to reform those workplace policies and the culture itself and the benefits of course like i mentioned it just because when we start focusing on the oral picture the root causes like you know why somebody's feeling uh, that their voice is not being heard then you start feeling that you know it's not that you know i'm 
I'm not competent enough. It's just that I, I'm not being provided the right kind of environment where I can be myself, uh, regardless, like you know, whatever the ethnicity I, I carry, whether I'm being an Indian or you know I'm a woman of color. So I think that's it's a high time that you know we start questioning rather the individuals than the environment itself, and that's the whole idea. So for example, like I um, I'm sharing one of the studies here. So for example, like. This is NetWest. It's a retail bank in the UK. They came up with this own your um, initiative, which is own your imposter campaign. Because, uh, like we have seen that and um, and heard so many times that it's more apparent uh, among women that you know um, ha- that they feel not competent enough. You know, despite of the fact that you know they have high performance metrics, but for example, they're not ready to push for the promotion because they think, you know what? Let me get it higher. Or, or for example, like, you know, I have heard and in fact, with myself also, and this is something that I keep on, I think, pushing myself as well. Like, you know, when I apply for, let's say, job position, I think that, you know, uh, for the job requirement, let's say there are 10 things. So I was ensure like, at least I should be able to, you know, uh, match up to eight out of 10, which is fe- not feasible enough because one of my mentor told me, like, you know, if you do like this, you know, then where the growth lies is because you will learn the remaining two skills maybe within six months or one year. So you will start again feeling bored. So I think we always, and whereas men, they just see, okay, let me try that. Like, you know, that's that confidence that they bring into the table. So, I mean, of course I'm growing and, you know, learning with that, but, you know, we always underestimate our own achievements. And that's why, again, like, you know, the NetWest has launched with this campaign that, you know, to understand that, you know, how, for example, like, we women can start and grow business because again, we came up with this perception. You know what? I don't have maybe the business skills or even if I have the skills, it's not enough. Like, you know, I should know the financial skills as well. I need to know the branding as well. I need to do the marketing, like, like, you know, overall, like the sales skills, I don't have all those skills. And that's why the, they came up with this initiative, which features all the influential women in the UK itself, like, you know, who started their entrepreneur journey so that, we all can get inspired from them and then how, you know, they can overcome, uh, how they have overcome their imposter syndrome. And uh, apart from that, they also launched the NetWest, the backup business. Again, it's a pro- uh, crowdfunding platform because at the end of the day, if you're running uh, any new venture, you need funding, you need support. So they provide those funding and mentorship. And in fact, within one year, they're able to see that there is a decrease in imposter syndrome. Women started applying for more funding and the mentorship like with this community and also of course there is a high rate of business grant application so you see more women entrepreneurs in the uk itself because of this uh campaigns so it's just uh, you know like so one of those example and then stacy dooley like one of the entrepreneurs she said that sharing my journey helps other face and conquer their doubts because uh, it's just that the, the limiting belief that you're carrying that you know i'm not good enough Maybe let me get all the skills right and then I'll start my, which doesn't happen with any one of us. Like, you know, we seek perfectionism, but sometimes perfectionism kills our own dreams because it didn't materialize. And that, you know, fear of failure. What if I fail? But I think we should just should give ourselves an opportunity, I think, or create a room for us that even if we fail, we'll, we're learning. There is always a growth or there is always a learning and that space. And that's why I think it's high time, like, you know, Rather than like, again, focus on individuals, the practical steps need to be taken by the organization, which can uh, focus maybe in the, initially in the, you know, four years. One is the bias awareness training. Like, for example, when I started with German language as well, I didn't know, like, you know, what are the biases I, I'm carrying within, you know, within dif- across uh, for one particular culture within India, because India is so diverse. So sometimes like, you know, the North India, South India has their own preconceived notions and perceptions in similar way that, you know, Germans are also caring for, let's say, for Indians. So that's one aspect. But also apart from that, like I have seen that how women of color, like, you know, can be discriminated in the informal networks. So those are things that, you know, I think we're not just consciously aware of that, you know, what kind of thoughts we're carrying for one particular community here or for one, uh, you know, in this context, the gender here itself. So maybe the regular training would be good that, you know, just to understand that, you know, where my thoughts are coming from, you know, what, what I'm thinking about that. Then secondly, I think when it comes to promotion, the hiring and everything, there has to be the open and transparent advancement criteria. Like everybody, there has to be clear objective, regardless of where you come from. There has to be a clear evaluation cl- cr- criteria so that nobody is being judged from like, you know, where again, 
which ethnicity, which gender, you, the socioeconomic condition you carry it. Then, of course, we need more support networks where people can be themselves. And this is where, like, especially the informal networks also can work. Like, you know, uh, where can we have the diverse groups as well? So, and this is where, again, it's high time that you focus on the inclusivity part of the culture that, you know, where people from different, uh, you know, communities come together, you know, try to brainstorm. And the policy reviews, of course, the, it's all about, like, annual checks and also the updates of workplace policies so that, you know, we uh, then needs to be just annual check so that, you know, we are on the right track. Then, of course, the leadership itself, like I think leaders are all about the leading by an example. So you need to act what you are looking into that. So, for example, like fostering the open and honest collab uh, conversations, there has to be flat hierarchy. So, for example, you're able to reach out to your manager without any hesitation. Your manager can reach out to you directly. So I think those are things we can do that. And again, like creating culture of belonging that, you know, just treating the people that the way the way you want to be treated. I think this is something that, you know, we can look at around and dedicate some resources to take that seriously. Like it's not something that it's like an ROI, like in the business term, like maybe, you know, and investing some in wellness program as well. We can look around that. And that's the last one, I think. Um I think the one of the key thing and the game changer would be that rather than again focus on individuals, we should start focusing on creating a new workplace culture which is as much inclusive and addresses you know the systemic issues that we're having into. Because in that way, uh, you know, we can actually create a change that we want to see it where people like you know and also keep on providing the constructive feedback without making them feeling anything less as well. So that and they also enhance their skills and identify also their growth areas as well, because it has again been proven if you have diverse teams, you actually have a better turnover because you are bringing different set of ideas in the organization itself, which again can benefit you in the long term. And apart from that, of course, when they feel belonged, you know, when employees feel belonged and also can be themselves, they, they tend to perform better. So. And also, like, there is a higher chance of also employee retention as well. So I'll stop here. And uh, I hope, like, you know, uh, this session turns out to be as valuable as you're looking up into. Please feel free to reach out to me um, if you have anything, like, if you have any questions or anything on my email address or any sort of feedback. Or And also, like, I'm, you can happily connect me over LinkedIn and have my page also the upper letters so you can watch more videos talking about different uh, women related issues. So thank you so much.